Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Rowan University Smash Virtual Esports Open, brought to you by Joystick Productions. I'd like to thank everybody for stopping in and uh, checking out some Super Smash Brothers action today. I am joined here by a representative of the shop, the SHOP, on campus, Leilani, who's going to talk to you a little bit before our event gets started today. Leilani? Hi, everyone. Um, so my name is Leilani Hinton. I'm an intern at the shop at Rowan. Um, I would first like to say thank you guys for raising money for the shop, and we're so grateful for it. Um, so a little bit about the shop is that it's a food pantry on campus, and we're located on Rowan, Rowan Boulevard Apartments, also known as Robo. Um, it's in the back near the RA's office where public safety used to be. Um, and it's a food pantry for any student at Rowan. And yes, it's free food. Um, and we're open Mondays and Fridays from 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. And if you guys aren't able to come during those times, you guys can email us um, at shop at rowan.edu if you guys need a better time and don't have and aren't available during those times on Monday and Friday or outside those days. Thank you all again. Um, I hope you guys have a rest, a great rest of your day. Thank you, Leilani. Appreciate it. Um, we are about to get started here with our first match. It's going to be Garf versus Starshi Co. We've got them in the lobby here, and we are just waiting on them to uh, get all their stuff set up. And for me to put their names up on screen. Should have that going in just a second here. Hope everybody is having a lovely weekend. Not too much homework, maybe. It's pretty early in the school year, but I don't know. Some classes really hit the ground running. This is going to be a... Ooh, we lost someone there. Hopefully, uh... Oh, wait a minute. Those, the, those are two different matches. <laughs> maybe we had the wrong person in here. What, what just happened? It was supposed to be Cold Ramen versus Jonas. Starshiko is supposed to be playing in a different match. There we go. Okay. So we, Starshiko is leaving the arena so that Jonas can join the arena. Uh, serves me not right for not checking the announcements carefully enough. So this is going to be Cold Ramen 1092 versus Jonas. That's actually what's happening here. Um, and that is a winner's round one match, so one of the first matches in the tournament. There is one pair of players that did get a round one buy. It was Pigzilla and JX04, but every... Well, okay, never mind. There was also Stardust, Army 7, and G-Unit. But everyone else is going to have a winner's round one match. And those matches have all been called, so... Should be ready to go with those soon. So, we're working on getting Jonas in here. I know that Jonas was there. Yeah, that's probably Jonas right there. Um, I saw them interacting in the Discord server. So we know that they're here. <laughs> we should be get ready to get going soon. Alright, and... Ooh, that is incorrect. I'll fix that real quick. There we go. And scooch it just a little bit. There we go. Never mind, I didn't like the scooch. Wait, wait. There. Look at that. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? Hope that you're all having a good day. Rosebud's having a good time. Love to see it. So I'm going to see if I can snoop. See if I can take a peep at uh, what their stage selection process might be looking like. Okay, that's Jonas. Perfect. We do have confirmation that that's who it is. 
Um, working out. Okay. So I don't see anything about their stage selection process, but for those who may not be in the know about how a Super Smash Brothers tournament works, um, at the beginning of the match, you have to decide which characters and what stages you're going to be playing on. Um, because the stage, depending on which characters you're playing, can give you some kinds of advantages. Um, certain characters like certain stage layouts better than others. So, in order to keep that advantage kind of neutralized, the players both have some input about which stage they play on first. And then after the first stage is selected, every subsequent stage, there's a slight advantage given to the player who lost the previous match about uh, which stage is chosen to kind of give them a little bit of a comeback mechanic. So the, the players at the beginning of every match are going to have a couple of minutes where they need to go through this process of deciding which stage they're going to play. Um, one player will ban one stage, then the next player will ban two, and so on and so forth until we only have one stage left in our legal stage list for them to play on. Um, there aren't that many stages that are legal in this game. There are a lot of very, very silly stages that are wonderful for casual play and not at all for competitive play. Um, I am not ever letting an opponent take me to the Great Cave Offensive unless I do not care about whether I win or lose. Um, so, we have a set of stages that's only five to start from. And one player will ban one, the next player will ban two, and then the first player will ban one again. That leaves one stage remaining, and that's the stage that they'll play on for round one. Um, and they do that with the knowledge of their opponent's character, so that they can choose the stage to best suit the matchup. That conversation is probably still ongoing. They're working it out here. And my cat is demanding my attention. So I will scritch him a little bit. And happy birthday weekend, Rosebud! Everybody say happy birthday to Rosebud. I hear you all saying it all the way over in New Jersey, just FYI. I, I heard all of those out loud, happy birthdays. Thank you very much for that. Rachel says happy birthday, Rosebud. Awesome. Um, checking out contact your opponent. It doesn't look like they've said anything new since. Do we have a coin flip here? Okay, we do have a coin flip. And uh, da -da 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 -da. the winner of the coin flip was Jonas. So we do have that information. Uh, there is also a cat. We, our, our bot does many useful things, um, one of the most important of them being showing a random picture of a cat, uh, but one of the other useful things being that we have a coin flip feature. So if you are uh, trying to decide which player will give their stage ban first, that's what the coin flip bot there is for. Both players have now entered the arena, and we're going to get to see what characters they have selected very shortly. They are not both Bayonettas, that's just kind of our default. It is difficult to guess who they will choose. But uh, I'll just uh, throw something down there, and we'll see if this ends up being correct. So do we do we have a cloud versus Isabel as my my random selections have led me to put down? If I'm correct about this, you all owe me like like ten dollars. Dunktastic. Ah shucks. Okay, Lucina versus Bowser. I guess that's fine. Uh, 
Alrighty. Let's get started for our first round of the tournament. Jonas on the Lucina, Cold Ramen on the Bowser. Surprised that it's Cold Ramen, considering that his character breathes fire. Oh, okay, it looks like these are hand warmers. <laughs> I... <laughs> I'm looking at this like, wow, this is a, this is a really uh, cerebral neutral exchange that they're having right now, playing really, really patient. No, they're just they're just warming their hands up. Have you heard of the popular hit game Among Us? It's a really cool game where one to three imposters try to kill off the crewmates while the crew has to finish their tasks or vote off the imposter. That's not even a good explanation of how the game works. Like, crewmates? What do you mean crewmates? Like, they're, they're little astronaut people. You've got to explain that they're astronauts and that it's like an alien that's trying to chase them. Like, Five dollars on Steam and other consoles, but it is free on the App Store or Google Play. Among Us? <gasps> what? <clears throat> yes. Uh, that is not the game that we are playing. We are playing Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, in which Sus Among Us Imposter Man is not a character. Would be OP. One shots everybody. And. Pretty good stage position there from Ramen, but the disjointed hitbox of Lucina's sword coming into play there. That is going to be a factor in the match. Um, Bowser does have pretty good range. However, every hitbox that he throws out there is a part of his body, except for the fire, of course. And so uh, if Lucina can space carefully around it, they can put out hitboxes that trade with Bowser's, but because they have a sword... It doesn't take damage if it gets hit. And just like that, you've scored yourself a hit by trading, essentially. So that's the advantage of the disjoint. That said, Cold Ramen has not been hurt too much by it. Up a full stock right now. Spacing very well. Um, one of the advantages that Bowser will have here is that uh, every, every time Lucina swings... It's a pretty big commitment. It takes a pretty long time for that move to come out. And so, the way that you play around a character with range and a disjointed hitbox like that, is you get them to commit to an attack. You get them to throw a move out there that's going to miss, because if you do that, then they're going to be in lag for a while, and you're going to be able to punish that. So stock trade happens there. Great follow-up by Lucina to get the edge guard there, but uh, immediately gets followed up on by a Bowser with inv an invulnerability. Gotta respect respawn platform invincibility. It is a crucial advantage in those first few seconds that will definitely win the opponent's stage position, but if you're not careful, can also allow them to score a pretty easy KO. Jonas playing pretty well with the spacing right now, going a little bit too aggressive for that up air. Um, they have to be really careful not to take any extra damage here, because Bowser is a very heavy character, takes a lot of punishment before he will go down, and in that time, if Lucina has tacked up too much damage, um, they run, may run out of time. But right now, they're doing an excellent job of taking this back. They've gotten themselves back to one stock apiece, and 67% is definitely a lead, especially for a character as heavy and survivable as Bowser is. But this is a much better situation than the full stock down they were a little bit earlier. Ooh, I don't know if uh, Jonas intended to get up on the ledge, but it ends up working out. Oh, I think they meant to land on stage there so they would be able to punish the landing. And uh, just sometimes... Being on Wi-Fi, having it be a little bit, bit laggy can mess up inputs like that, so. The uh, up B out of shield comes up from Bowser. That shield is an M&M &M right now, and they cannot shield another one. Bowser sits on Lucina to take the game there. That's a very painful thing. Do not recommend... ...having the full body weight of a Bowser drop on your head.
So cold ramen takes game one, but uh, I think Jonas was, it looked like they were starting to warm up just a little bit towards the end of that game. Like this still looks competitive right now. They were on a good pace, starting with about stock number two, starting to find their confirms, starting to overcommit a little bit less. So this definitely could still be anyone's game. Should play Among Us instead. It's a little bit harder to set up 1v1s in Among Us, unfortunately. We did consider it. No, we didn't. When they add in Goku as DLC. Yeah, that that is the one thing that uh, Fortnite does have going for it right now. I guess, I mean, Lucario's Aura Sphere is basically Kamehameha, right? That's, that's pretty much true. All right, um, let's see if they have stage strikes anywhere in, nope. They're not doing this in contact their your opponent. I think they're doing it in uh, DMs, so we can't snoop. I do enjoy being able to snoop, but it's all good. So... Not knowing either of the players, it would be interesting to see if there ends up being a character switch at some point here. More likely to see the player who lost the previous round do that, but uh, I also feel like, first of all, it's very common for... Um, uh, it's very common to kind of stick to your guns and try to learn to adapt when it gets that close. Um, and I think that Jonas was definitely starting to pick up on things, starting to figure it out. Also, they're going to have the ability to counterpick, so now they can pick a stage that's a little bit more advantageous for Lucina. I'd probably stick around and, and try and make it work one more time. Are still in winner's bracket, so even if this doesn't pay off, you still have the opportunity to try that other character you wanted to try in the loser's bracket below. For those who don't know how uh, a competitive Super Smash Brothers tournament works, uh, this is double elimination. That means that you have to lose twice in the bracket to be taken out of it. Um, so just because you lost that first round doesn't mean that you're, you're just out for good. You do have another chance. And that other chance happens in a second bracket that's completely separate from the first one. So... The Final Four, for example, if you watch uh, NCAA Basketball, that whole bracket situation they've got, that's single elimination. You lose once you're out. But imagine there's a whole second set of those brackets below it, and when you lose from the first one, you drop down into the second one and continue all the way through it until the end. And the winner of the loser's bracket gets to go all the way back up and play against the last player standing in the winner's bracket at the very end in Grand Finals. And that will actually be our last match of the afternoon. So, still waiting on uh, Cold Ramen and Jonas to make their stage selection here. They are free to continue forward as soon as they are ready. But uh, important for them to, you know, take their time and make the choices properly. Also might be a good opportunity right now to, you know, go get a drink of water and kind of get your head straight. Mentality is a pretty important aspect of the game. And uh, while we may not have as much insight in, into that watching their their little uh, avatar tokens on the screen Would not be surprised if that was happening all right so they are hopping out and uh, typically what that means is that they are they have decided on the stage they're making sure to both pick that stage so that ends up being what gets played and now they're entering the arena again and same characters 
Nothing's changed there. Here we go. See what stage Jonas decided to take us to this time. Pokemon Stadium. All right. GLHF. Pokemon Stadium 2, of course, to be clear. Pokemon Stadium 1 is not a tournament legal stage. It is uh, fairly similar looking, but it's differently shaped. And this shape is more conducive to competitive play. Anyone's guess uh, which of the transformations are worse, but we have stage hazards turned off, so there will be no transformations. Dead even so far in percent. Jonas trying to poke their way in. Not quite finding the right hitbox just yet. Good nair there gives them some stage control, but they're going to get immediately shield grabbed for trying to side B. And up B out of shield for cold ramen. Jonas has to be careful about where they're swinging here because Bowser is just getting away with shielding an awful lot. There's some situations where even though you have that big disjointed hitbox, if they get the idea that they can just shield everything, you might need to mix in something like... Excuse me. You might need to mix in something like a grab to make the player think twice about shielding. Jonas with a forward smash off the side, runs off for the counter, and while Cold Ramen avoids the counter, it is at the cost of the height they need to recover. So well played from Jonas, despite the fact that that doesn't end up connecting. So it did, nevertheless, safeguard the ledge from Bowser returning to it. I wouldn't want to be that ledge if Bowser's trying to jump on top of me. That would hurt. I'm liking the spacing that I'm seeing here from Jonas. Great cross up there with the Nair. Um... Knowing that that attack is unsafe on shield if it lands facing Bowser, because they will be able to shield grab it. But if you can convince him to try and shield grab and then land on the opposite side, that it'll miss. What Bowser needs to do in that situation is up B out of shield instead. So, a little bit of nuance to that interaction. Really, really good spacing there from Jonas. They know where it is they're strong on stage, knowing that they weren't there. They decided to just go back and take center stage while Bowser swung. Cold Ramen closes the distance and gets in with a down smash to even things up at one stock apiece exactly. Dead even right now. Trying to get some Nair strings going, and I again like the spacing on shield. Making sure to stay outside of that grab range of Bowser's so that they cannot activate that grab from the shield and immediately catch them. And that was a little bit less safe on the spacing there, and they knew it because they threw a shield out there. But Cold Ramen has yet to really do a lot of significant damage. Really aggressive edge guard attempt from Jonas that is going to give up a little bit of stage position. And they actually catch Cold Ramen out of the down B and just keep trying to zone them out towards this side of the stage. This is really great control gameplay from the Lucina here. Lucina plays to keep you on the back foot for as long as possible. They're not going to try and necessarily hit combos, but if they can use their range to keep you zoned out into an area of the stage you don't want to be in, then they can steadily tack up damage while staying relatively safe themselves. Lots of advantageous interactions, even if they're not getting a whole lot off of any one of them. Now, Cold Ramen did get in and do a lot of burst damage, and Jonas didn't recognize that they'd been tapped off the ledge. And they didn't quite recover in time. Not quite a good enough reaction. And that's unfortunate. You tend to see things like that happen as a result of latency in the connection between the two players. Um, it really decreases your amount of time to be able to respond when something that like that happens. So, definitely not the, the way that Jonas wanted that one to end. But that is the sort of thing where, you know... If you think about it proactively, it can definitely be avoided. So, great games to those two players. Very close matches between them. Clearly some competitive experience on display there, I would say. 
and uh, we'll see how far they can make it later on in the bracket. For the time being, though, that is going to be it for that winner's round one match. We have Cold Ramen 1092 advancing over Jonas, who will drop into the loser's bracket to play against the uh, loser of Pigzilla and JX104. So. There we go. So let's see. We have our uh, t tournament organizer, TO for short, actually Andy, in the Rowan U Smash Discord server. They are the ones who are, they are the one who is calling matches today. Any match that should be played is going to be pinged by Andy. And so Andy will be calling what our next match is, and there it is. So we're going to be seeing Stardust versus Starshiko. And I just realized I made a typo when I was typing in Stardust. So I'm going to fix that. There we go. Okay. Stardust versus Starshiko. There will only be one star remaining in the bracket after this. Stars are very large. They take up a lot of space. You can't, can't always uh, have too many of them in one place. It creates a lot of gravity. So this advances us to winner's round two of the bracket. This is our, our winner's quarterfinal, if you want to think about it that way instead. Got an Andy fan in the chat. Can I have my $19 Fortnite card back? Uh, I don't have it. I don't know who does. Hopefully they give it back to you, but uh, unfortunately that falls outside my jurisdiction. All right. So Starshi Co. has made it into the arena. And then Stardust was just pinging looking for them, so they should be here shortly. Clam down! So, we've got an Amy Rose profile picture. What character do we think that is in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate? Let's play our favorite guessing game here. The immediate thought would be Sonic. You know, but... Uh, typically, in my experience... There are two kinds of players. There are players who will make their icon the, the character that they play, or they will make their icon a favorite character of theirs that they have access to, but don't actually play for mechanical reasons. So, for example, I have no particular emotional attachment to the Marth of Fire Emblem, but I am a Marth main in Smash Bros., because sword go whack and it's fun. 
So... You can see I have the uh, the Inkling avatar here. That's not who I actually play. So what would an Amy Rose Enjoyer play in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate? Can I join even though I'm in Canada? I mean, through the internet all things are possible. However, this is a tournament specifically for... People from Rowan University um, had to be a student. And also, the uh, tournament has already begun. So, it's a little bit late to be uh, putting you into the bracket. Yes, apologies for jailing you. Is that a thing they say in Canada when they put you in prison? Apologies for jailing you. <laughs> that seems like a Canadian thing that would happen. Say sorry about it. So we had some characters chosen and I don't know if they intended to have those particular characters chosen because they immediately dropped out of it like oh wait a minute that's not right so we've got Wilson aka Stardust and their icon is Taboo Final boss of Super Smash Bros. Brawl. And a crazy busted one at that. They have a move that just insta-KOs. Just kind of wild. I'm sure it's avoidable, but I never finished, figured it out as a kid. <laughs> I sure never uh, got that to work. I was just like, well, guess I'm losing this character now. Say what you will about the competitive potential of Brawl. Subs Subspace Emissary was a very cool concept that uh, a lot of people were excited for. Definitely, when they heard about the World of Light single player. Probably hoping for a few more cutscenes, though. something going on that doesn't look like it can't see anything in the discord server so it looks like they're still trying to figure things out here Six messages all at once. Huh. Nightbot feeds tonight. That looks a lot like Oscar the Grouch. I know it's called Bush. Like someone's just camping in the bush, presumably in Fortnite. 
but that's totally Oscar the Grouch, right? Like, y'all see that. I'm sure y'all see that. Okay, and yes, we do in fact have different characters now, so... Not sure what happened the first time. But uh, we've got a hero... Versus a Lucas. So Lucas immediately working to close the distance, and that's kind of going to be the, the story of the matchup. If they leave Hero alone for too long, Hero gets to just do magic things that buff them and make them a lot more difficult to deal with. Bounce is actually a really huge thing for them to get against the Lucas. Lucas does have some projectiles that can be useful for moving in, but they're not going to be useful if they keep getting reflected back at him. There's a down throw, no forward air for Starshiko, however, a big forward smash there. You've got to be really careful getting hit by hero forward smashes because you might just get crit at like 70 and immediately be KO'd. Dash attack will do it for Starshiko. Lucas is, after all, a small boy, is not the very, uh, not, not the very heavy character that someone like a Bowser will be. So... They are not going to survive anywhere near as long getting hit by big smash attacks. Or even just the dash attack, as we've seen. Starshiko... Ooh, oh no! Looked like there was a recovery error of some kind there from Stardust, and they're taking a second on the respawn platform to recollect themselves after it. Probably not the way that they intended for that to go. Smart use of the upbe there, allowing them an escape route in case it goes and uh, hits the shield. So they jump into the snooze, which does end up going better for them than uh, being put to sleep would. Because then Starshiko just gets a free smash attack out of it. Ooh. Starshiko kind of all over him on that one. Um, a lot of uh, even melee hitboxes. A lot of the sword attacks just doing a lot of work for Starshi there. Hero is a character generally designed around the projectiles, generally designed around the fancy stuff that you can do with your MP bar. Fairly lackluster frame data on the physical attacks, but in order to charge the MP bar, you need to use the physical attacks. And so it's this trade-off between having some attacks that just seem downright broken in this game, but having to charge them by using a moveset that is not particularly good. But Starshi seeming to be making it work, even just with the aerials and whatnot. A few overcommitments here and there from Stardust... Uh, trying to get in position and we can see that they have some you know understanding of competitive movements on the Lucas things like the uh, cross up up B hit two crosses shield was one thing that clues me in about it the uh, use of the magnet to kind of wave bounce around is something that we're seeing which again is some competitive level movement tech so, they definitely know what they're doing, but they're having some trouble uh, spacing in this situation against a character with longer range, with, you know, that disjointed hitbox we were talking about earlier of the sword that Hero has, and also probably contending with just a little bit of delay from playing online, which is inevitable in a Nintendo netcode environment. We do love us Nintendo as game designers, but uh, their network infrastructure is generally about 15 years behind at any, at any given point in time. can be a bit frustrating.
So conversation goes on about who's going to play what character and where they're going to end up on stages. We'll just have to wait and see what it is that they end up deciding on there. Okay, Stardust dropping out. Um, this could mean that they're just changing the stage. This could also mean character swap, though. Starshiko not dropping out yet. There they go. All right. Let's see what they've decided on for our second match here. What could potentially be the deciding match if it were to go to Starshiko. All of the matches are going to be best of three up until the point where we get to the finals matches. So that is winners finals, losers finals, and grand finals. Anything with finals in the name, that's what's best of five. But we're not there yet. We're only in winners round two. Winners quarterfinals, uh, if we want to use that term. Well, that's confusing because it's got finals in the name, and I just said... That's not not it, so yeah. <clears throat> anyway, we're both back in the arena, and it looks like we are going for it. Starshiko deciding to bust out the Sora here. And we're on final destination. Ooh, tries to go for that uh, up B edge guard to cover all of the options here and doesn't quite manage to make it connect in time. But you can see the idea there to cover the edge guard, to cover the, the recovery, I should say, with the up B. And then if that ends up whiffing and they go high, you hit yourself with the up B to use that hitbox to punish them for landing right next to you. Doesn't quite pan out, but. It's definitely the thought put into that. Stardust in a little bit of trouble with the recovery there. And in fact, the uh, up he goes the wrong way, which will cost them some precious time and get them taken out off the top. Starshi going in, trying to counter. Doesn't end up working. Good patience from Stardust. And they are able to get an another edge guard situation. Tap them with the up B, but aren't quite able to get the down air to connect. And so... Starshiko is back on stage, trying to get a jungle, uh, a jungle, a juggle setup going on the Lucas here. Now Lucas, relatively fast character, very small targets, moves through the air pretty effectively. So it's not going to be the easiest character in the game for Sora to get those combos off on. But a beautiful edge guard off stage with the Thundaga is going to do it for Starshi. And Stardust finds themselves once again on last stock against Starshi's third. And it is still not going in Stardust's favor in terms of these damage trades. They're just having a lot of trouble landing something here. They get a back throw off stage. Try to go for the PK freeze off stage, but that's going to be deftly avoided. But the stick is sometimes a very effective weapon, and Starshi is down to their second stock now. Starshi throws off stage and again goes for the Thundaga. This time, not quite KOing, but does still connect. Stardust looked like they might have had the idea that it was happening, but were not able to avoid it. And the back air from Starshi is going to finish it off. Starshi is going to be the winner of this set in winner's round two. 
Scores are actually shown uh, up top. So right next to their names, that number right there is the number of games that each player has won. So Starshi with the 2-0 victory here. We've already got that reported. Let's see what our next match is going to be on stream. If I had to guess, I would anticipate that it's going to be Starshi Co. versus JX104. That is a match that is immediately playable on the winner's side, so that's my guess. But maybe Andy, our TO, knows something I don't hear. So we might actually have Starshi Co. just stay in the arena. Yep, it is going to be Starshi Co. versus JX104. Oh, right when I say they're going to stay in the arena, they dip out of here. But they're actually going to need to come right back because they have another match. We now advance to the winner's semifinal round. So again, this is still best of three, but we're getting into the uh, later stages of the tournament here. And uh, this is a match that can definitely have a pretty significant impact on the outcome of the tournament. There are only going to be four players left in the winner's bracket at this stage. And... The winners of these matches get to advance to a guaranteed at least third place. Whereas the losers are only guaranteed as far as fifth place. Um, so winning this effectively at least lets you skip over losers semifinals. Which can be a pretty hotly contested match. Can be good to dodge that in that situation. JX104 making it into the arena here. I'm sure Starshi Co. will not be far behind them. And there they are. All right. We have yet to see JX104 yet in this tournament. I said yet already. But uh, JX104 got a round one bye and then defeated Pigzilla 2 to nothing to get into this match. Meanwhile, as we've seen, Starshiko took down Stardust and also defeated Garf in round one to be able to make it here. On the other side of the bracket, we started off by looking at Cold Ramen 1092 versus Jonas. And here I can actually show you the bracket for a second. I'll have to scooch that just a little bit so that you guys can see. It's aligned, uh, lined up a little bit better. But So we started off with uh, Cold Ramen 1092 versus Jonas. And then the winner of that, Cold Ramen, advances and is currently playing Army 7. Here is Starshi Co. and their uh, path through the bracket. And here's JX104. They end up over here with us. Then on the other side, we've got Gecko, who has advanced through G-Unit and Ghosty so far. And then Loser's Bracket is still down in Loser's Round 1. So that'll take a second to resolve. check really quick and make sure that this command is working as intended yes it is so if you want to find the bracket and uh, have a look at it at any point during the tournament exclamation mark bracket will kick that out to you and you can check in on how your favorite players are doing or if you're a competitor and you're just wondering who do, who do I have to play next it's also a solid use case for it. So 
So what do y'all think? Is JX104 a DDD player? I'll bet on it. I'll throw down. I'll put it all on black. Taking a second, figuring out their stage selections and whatnot, presumably. Um, I'm not seeing any communication in contact your opponent, so presumably it's all going down in DMs. We know the results of the coin flip, but we don't actually know who won it. It was heads, for those of you wondering. Sure, there there are some of you out there who are curious about that. All right, looks like selections have been made. Starshi Co makes it into the arena, and let's see what JX one hundred four ends up going for here. I'm feeling a little more confident it's a DDD because JX one hundred four also has a Discord profile picture that's a DDD. There we go. All right, we've got one on the board in terms of the predictions. DDD, a very interesting character in this game. Um, very gimmicky, has lots of uh, tricky things that they can do that are actually pretty simple to counter if you know, but... Uh, if you're unfamiliar with the matchup, it can be a huge problem. Character is a very large target and relatively easy to combo. So while they are heavy, they do rack up damage pretty quickly against a character who's able to punish that well. Going to rely heavily on the use of these Gordos to be able to do damage from a distance safely. Because engaging is always risky when you're that large. That's slow. But they do hit like a truck if they manage to make something connect. Good use of the forward air there to control some space. They go in and try and cover their angles with the Gordo, but Starshiko is doing a really good job of handling the Gordo spam right now, knowing that that actually isn't particularly strong. Throwing out some of those, those one-hit ideas, the thwack and the whack. Great defense from Starshiko. Put off stage a number of times there and was able to avoid a lethal edge guard the entire way. They've now got JX104 off stage. Trying to play it safe and uh, not get countered, not get reversed on. Slight advantage to JX104 here, again being the heavier character. Having that much damage is not that big of a deal, and they do manage to connect with that powered-up hammer. It is a very powerful attack, but uh, does not offer the DDD much in the way of mobility. So landing it is always a challenge. We have Starshiko powered up here, and they do manage to use that to phenomenal effect getting the KO right away. As one of their spells powers up their abilities, their uh, specifically attacks, so that they do more damage and knockback. Starshiko with fantastic stage position right now. Standing underneath this platform here is great for the edge guarder. Protects you from aerial approaches. 
So you only have to focus on a certain number of directions. And you're also boxing your opponent out of center stage. Center stage is always the most valuable position on the stage to maintain. Because it gives you the ability to both advance and retreat as you would like. Also puts you as far away as possible from any of the blast zones. Oh, and the one shot comes through. Starshiko snipes out a DDD stock. We'll see if that ends up having an impact on the momentum here. Starshi a little bit low on mana. <coughs> oh, they actually had a magic burst ready to go. Not the best position to use that from is one of the most powerful edge guards in the game because of how far off stage it will reach. Charge up a fireball, actually one of the more consistent magic attacks that the hero has. Oh, and that's just gonna do it. Forward smash up close. Great job reading the Gordo attack, running straight under it. And immediately going for the KO option, knowing that DDD was not going to expect to be closed in on. Starshiko definitely looking like a contender in this tournament. They have been weaving their way deftly around all of their opponents' offense so far. Clearly have some competitive experience. Lots of reads being made on their opponents here. Looking pretty impressive so far. We'll see if JX104 can figure out some new ideas here to try and challenge this hero player. So this is winner's bracket game here for JX104. They need to win this one in order to stay in the bracket. Starshiko got to be feeling comfy after such a decisive win. Looking pretty good for their ability to advance. What we do sometimes see here in a situation where uh, a player is pretty confident that they're going to be able to advance is that we often see that they start warming up other characters, testing other characters, just so that if they do end up being challenged in the winner's finals or grand finals, that they are aware of how their different characters are playing today. They can kind of make a decision which is going to be the most likely character to win for this set and confidently pick that one knowing how they're they're feeling on that day all right and we have a switch to sora We've, we saw this before versus uh stardust or starshiko won the first with hero but then switched up to sora on the second match Maybe it's a character that they enjoy playing, or maybe it's a character that they just want to keep warm. But uh, they get hit very early on here and lose a stock very early. So JX104 in good shape for now. That said, that, that sort of a stock, sometimes you can look at that and go, okay, that was a little bit gimmicky. I don't think they can repeat that. But uh, so far... JX104 is spacing around the Sora very well and maintaining their one stock lead so far. Oh no! 
Starshi code trying to ladder combo JX104 off the top, but just gets up aired out of it, and Sora is the one who ends up going flying. All of a sudden, Starshiko in kind of the opposite position they were in the last match. They're about to get three stocked if they're not careful here. And still no KO. Okay, there we go. Commentator's Curse. Starshiko able to take the DDD out off the top side. But that counter a little bit on the predictable side. JX104 going to eat that up. There's down throw into forward air. JX104 looking like they know how to play this matchup. Baits out the counter. Oh, but that is just going to do it. Very low percentage two stock for JX104. A complete inversion of how the first game went. You have to imagine that Starshiko is thinking, all right, not the character for that moment in time. I would not at all be surprised to see a swap back to the hero now after how that has gone. In the meantime, we do have a match report update on the bracket here. Cold Ramen and Army 7 was a winner's round two match. Winner advances to winner's semifinals, which is the round we're currently in. And Cold Ramen took that two to one. So it was a close match with Army 7. But Cold Ramen ended up being the one to do it. So I believe up next we will be seeing Cold Ramen 1092 versus Gecko or G Gecko. But we're not out of this round of winners final semifinals yet. We've got a significant back and forth here between Starshi and JX104. JX104 I will say, definitely seemed like they were more competent against the Sora and that uh, Starshi was maybe blundering into a couple of uh, DDD hitboxes with the Sora. But JX104 was also looking like they were playing a little bit better. Maybe they found, uh, found their rhythm somehow. So we'll see if Starshiko can disrupt that now in this, the deciding game of the set. Winner of this is guaranteed third, moves on to winner's finals. Loser of this is guaranteed only fifth and drops into loser's quarters. Looks like the stage has been chosen. JX104 is ready, and we do have the hero back out, as predicted. They do, like, different costumes for hero. There are a couple of cool ones. Maybe they're a Dragon Quest fan, and uh, that's their, their different costumes from various games. Ooh. 
Oh, getting clipped a couple of times. The Gordo's there. Oh, goodness. That was a little bit frightening. Starshi really starting to struggle here against the DDD. This is looking like a completely different set than we saw in game one. Immediate zero to death for JX104. And still not a hit landed by Starshi. Being completely zoned out here on the right side of the stage. Finally get a grab off, but even then no follow up. Starshi at full mana, choosing to go in at melee range and not try to contest the Gordos. Having some trouble getting magic spells off, it looks like, while the Gordo is bouncing toward him. Oof. Starshi able to reflect that Gordo back, but struggling to get some of these attacks off. Ooh, whiffs on the neutral air there. They throw Snooze out there. JX104 going to avoid that by just staying on the platform. Aggressive edgeguard attempt, but uh, the up B is not enough to get them all the way out there. And uh, JX104 with the three stock. After dropping game one in pretty convincing fashion. Where's the melee? In my heart. And on my computer. Welcome, craziest E Vandal. Craziest Evan Dell. Couldn't tell you. And Devious. Where's Mango? Uh, probably in uh, Norwalk somewhere, no? Somewhere in SoCal? Alrighty, well, with that match being done, we are going to move to the other side of winner's semifinals for Cold Ramen versus G Gecko. We have yet to see G Gecko on stream, but in the meantime, they have defeated Ghosty in winner's round one and G Unit in winner's round two. To make it all the way up to be playing against Cold Ramen. We did see Cold Ramen 1092 earlier on against Jonas. We're going to have to uh, politely ask uh, JX104 to leave here. That way we can get things going. So, in the meantime, here's a quick look at the bracket so that we can see where we've made our where we've uh, made it to. So this is the match that we just saw, JX104 surprising us by coming back in convincing fashion against Starshi Co. So that drops Starshi Co into losers quarters here where they are guaranteed 5th place. They will play the winner of Army 7 versus Garf. And then JX104, of course, advancing to winner's finals here, guaranteed third place. They will play against the winner of the match we're about to see on screen. Meanwhile, we have Army 7 and Garf, and then Pigzilla and Stardust down in loser's top eight. Sometimes you misclick on uh, on OBS and silly things happen. All right, swapping them around. 
That is uh, HMTG Gecko on the Yoshi here. I think that's fitting. Uh, Yoshi is... Uh... Have, you, have you all seen that uh, video of the, the geckos that are eating honey or something with Yoshi sound effects every time their tongue goes out? I think that's like just one of the most beautiful videos on the entire internet. Makes me very happy. Highly recommend going and watching it right now. It's only like five seconds long. But in the meantime, we've got a battle of two dinosaurs. Vastly different proportions and capabilities. Yoshi, an extremely fast character in the air. Some of the best air steer to ever be in Super Smash Brothers. So they're going to use that aerial mobility to make aerial approaches. And they just get command grabbed out of the air and stock traded by Cold Ramen. And uh, they trade some taunts, but uh, <laughs> Cold Ramen taunts for a little bit longer than Gecko does. So, Lion's share of that damage going to Cold Ramen. They're not hurting too much for it. After all, they are a very tanky character. Ooh, but they do get put off stage here, and that's a dangerous situation to be in as the character with the worst recovery. Some strong recovery game here from G Gecko, using those eggs to keep themselves safe on the way back on stage. That enables to get them to get the stage position that they need to hit that forward smash. Cold Ramen trying to finish it off right away. Almost gets there, but the up B is a little bit of an overcommitment. And uh, they tank a little bit of damage for doing so. Still not hurting for that damage, though. 16%. I'd say Bowser's still in the lead. Uppy out of shield will open up the Yoshi here, but uh, only really gives Cold Ramen access to center stage. Some well-used fire breath to stuff the aerial approach. They try to use the down air again, but uh, Gecko catching onto it here. Got him pinned against the level here, going in for these forward airs, but not finding any of them. There's another one. Tries a down smash, not going to find the KO. Just throwing some eggs, trying to stay safe. That combo into up air is dangerous, and that probably will do it, yes. G Gecko on uh, the, the Bayonetta, of course. Oopsie daisies. G Gecko finding that up air confirm. They were kind of fishing for a little bit beforehand. And Bowser's out of there. So G, G Gecko with a good showing here so far against Cold Ramen.
All right, sticking to the same characters here. Here's game two. As before, best of three. So if G Gecko were to take this, it would advance. Very good string right off the bat, getting Cold Ramen pinned to the right side of the stage. They're able to use that stage control. Down air does break it. That down air has been a good uh, both KO option and combo breaker for Cold Ramen so far. But it is a stall and fall. Relatively predictable move. Gotta be... Oh, no! And we have got a dunk, ladies and gentlemen. The glass is shattered. Gecko gonna be fined by the league to replace the basketball hoop. Whew. Whiffing just a little bit on that forward smash, and I do not blame Gecko in the slightest for throwing the shield up, just in case. Lots of these stall and falls coming out from Cold Ramen. Does finally get a grab here, and that will KO. But 74% taken already, and they do not respect the respawn invincibility. So they take a little bit more. That's going to be a forward smash. Not going to KO. Bowser's too heavy for that. And they didn't have enough time to charge it anymore because Bowser was going to release the Fire Breath. You can see the idea there, but uh, the timing not quite there. Just lag probably coming into play as well. Dropped quite a few frames on the way over. Just tries to swing for the forward smash, but at that point too late. Needed to swing when they were in range to hit, to hit it, and uh, they ended up going a little bit early on that. Up air will definitely do it for Yoshi at this point. Cold Ramen really needs to get a little bit of extra damage at least tacked on here, but they don't get much. Down B from Gecko will do it. Cold Ramen trying to threaten with aerials here. Relatively good spacing, but not finding any hits yet. Up B out of shield will prevent them from taking that much damage. But the uh, throw combo does a little bit of extra. 39%. Oh, that's a big down air. Did a lot of damage with that one move. Cold Ramen really needs this stock. They are hemorrhaging too much damage. And they are not going to get it. Another jab reset. Gecko using those jab resets to devastating effect on their knockdowns here. Getting two stocks that way with that same setup. So Gecko will be advancing on winner's side to winner's finals. Already on top of things, we've already got that put into the bracket. So here's a quick look at what it is looking like currently. So this is uh, moved a little bit further to the right so that we can see all of the progress being made. Here is where we currently are in winner's finals. JX104's DDD versus Gecko's Yoshi. Cold Ramen down here in loser's quarters now. They will play the winner of Pigzilla and Stardust. And then Starshiko and Army7 going to play off for the right to advance to loser's semifinals. We were seeing a lot of Star Shiko earlier on the Hero and the Sora. Army 7 played a very close match against Cold Ramen, 2 to 1. So that should be an interesting competitive match. But we're probably going to see the winner's side first before we see any of this action down in the loser's bracket. That is, in fact, the case. JX104 and Gecko has been called to the stream. So Gecko will be uh, hopping out to make sure they've got their stage selections made. And there's JX104 ready to go. Love to see it. Things have been moving very smoothly so far. 
all of our competitors are doing a great job of paying attention to when they are needed and being prompt about getting in to the arenas and whatnot. So thank you all for that. My boy, Army7, don't sleep on him. They definitely have had a good showing so far. Cold Ramen, one of the semi-finalists, they did drop a game to him. Army 7 currently working their way up through the loser's side. May end up seeing some of those matches later. All right, JX104 is ready to go. We're here in winner's finals. Two undefeated players enter, one undefeated player leaves. Winner of this is guaranteed second place in the tournament. Loser is only guaranteed third and will have to play against someone from the loser's bracket before they can make their way back up. Gecko starting out with really, really good control there. Great call out with the, uh, the egg throw on where they anticipated JX104 moving. And so far it has all been Gecko. Couple of counter hits here and there from JX104, and that one actually opens Yoshi up. Some big damage there, and Gecko having to play relatively safe on that recovery to make it back. But some heavy hits here coming from both sides. Gecko largely in the lead, but remember DDD a heavier character. And does hit like a truck. So I can turn around in a hurry. Woo, that is a lot of shield damage. But uh, JX104 able to hang in there with it. They actually get the ledge trump advantage. And the Gordo comes in, does not quite KO, but continuing to threaten on the ledge here. They get a grab, do a bunch of damage, again going for the Gordos. But Yoshi, with that aerial mobility, just going to weave around all of those edge guard options. Not weave around the up tilt, though. That will take the stock for JX104 and secure them a slight early lead. Down B almost does it. They need to be very careful, Gecko, about how JX104 decides to come down. JX104 is allowed to get stage control here, but the down B at a shield is going to do it. Pretty much dead even. Slight advantage, I would say, to DDD, just in terms of percent. More than a slight advantage now. Multiple Gordos correcting, connecting in a row. Gecko going really aggressive on the edge guard there, all the way out there. Trying to be very careful about DDD's stall and fall options, making sure to position in such a way they can avoid it, but the back air from JX104 going to take that stock too. Very aggressive play coming out here from Gecko to try and equalize before any more damage is taken, and a couple of really solid options that just barely whiff, barely don't do enough knockback. At 184, though, DDD is not long for this stock. Oh, and the shield break going to combo into that charge smash attack, into the taunt, of course. 
JX104 choosing to take some of their respawn invincibility to return the taunt. I think it was totally worth it. Definitely was the most optimal thing they could have done in that position. That is one of those disadvantages of the Gordos that strong players will recognize that uh, you can just knock them back in DDD with a lot of options. Just take your most disjointed move and try and hit it. That is a massive combo off the stage from Gecko and out of nowhere just steals a stock away after being the first to lose the stocks, both first and second stock. Gecko with just an explosive combo takes JX104 out and all of a sudden they are up one to nothing. Big turnaround there. Great use of that opportunity from G Gecko. Now remember, this is a best of five, so JX104 going to have more opportunities to get back into this match than they would in a best of three set. They could even potentially win back counter pick advantage if they win the next two straight. So they were looking relatively uh, in control most of that match. But uh, when Gecko does start hitting, they definitely have follow-ups. They definitely have setups. I wasn't commenting on it too much, but uh, there were a couple of opportunities there where they would hit something like an egg and then just barely whiff on the up smash to try and follow it up. All of those could have been KO KOs that happened earlier. So Gecko's definitely swinging with some good ideas. And eventually... Those are going to start working for you. JX104 opting to go to Final Destination. Just no platforms. Keep the Yoshi down on the floor here with me. Don't give them those extra mobility options. Oof. But Gecko saying, I'm not stuck here with you. You're stuck here with me. So far doing the lion's share of the damage. Playing a game of tennis with a Gordo here, but uh, Yoshi reminds everybody that this is not, in fact, Mario Tennis, that this is Super Smash Brothers, and the goal is to jump over the net and beat your opponent up. JX104 trying to get this stock, but the combo game from the Yoshi just already tacking on so much damage. Yoshi not really a KO percent yet for most of DDD's moves. But they are already uh, getting DDD to about mid-percent. Oh, goodness. The Gordo reflects they're definitely not going in JX104's favor. Lots of trading going on, and that definitely goes in Gecko's favor here. And there's the shield break again. Forward smash. Opting not to taunt this time. Back air will take it for JX104, but a stock later than they probably wanted to. Great approaches here from Gecko, using the eggs to cover themselves. Goes in for a little bit too uh, reckless in there, but doesn't matter. Is able to get a follow-up off the top of it. Another knockdown. Really, really got to watch out for these knockdown situations as JX104. If you don't hit those techs... Gecko has been showing that they are perfectly capable of landing some really sick follow-ups out of it. Trying to use the Gordo here to lock Yoshi down, but Gecko has just been showing too much of a skill for knocking those back at J104. And Gecko kind of running away with it in that game. That did not feel close at any point in the match. So this is a very difficult position for JX104 to be in. 
They get one more opportunity to counterpick. And so hopefully they can use that wisely and use that to get some momentum back. But in a two to nothing situation, you have to win three straight and two of those are going to be on your opponent's counterpicks. And it's possible that they may have just inadvertently found a counterpick of Gecko's because that stage did not go the way that I think J JX104 was hoping it would. Oh, they just go straight back to uh, Final Destination. I don't know. It, to me, it's seeming like DDD is going airborne a lot, and that airspace is better controlled by a Yoshi. I think the platforms, if anything, slow the Yoshi down and give, give DDD some options for how to get up there and approach with their grounded options. Good juggle here so far from JX104. Looking a lot more solid than in the last game so far. And they are able to follow that with an up smash. Well read by JX104. And they are going to be able to start this game three with a stock lead. Not for very long though. Gecko responds with a dunk off the side. Well played juggle here so far from JX104. Unfortunately, you can't overcommit to trying to juggle Yoshi. They will punish you on the way down by avoiding your attack and then just air steering back in because they as a character can do that. Even so far, whiffs with the down B and that's a really risky situation. Good recovery from JX104 and I really like the way that they used the uh, landing to cancel that up air so they did not get caught in as much lag. And there is a beautiful ladder combo from Gecko here. No punish on the taunt from JX104. They opt to uh, taunt a little bit themselves. Ooh, and Gecko in a pretty strong position right now. That is a lot of damage that they just gave out really quickly. The up air will finish it. So JX104 is going to have a shot at Gecko's last stock on this game here. They are going to need to take it in order to stay in the winner's bracket. Oof, Gecko does not want to let that happen. Going all the way off stage and taking a pretty commanding position. Doesn't end up going their way. JX104 is back to safety, at least for now. X104 with good spacing on that forward air. Tries to come back in. Oh, that's really dangerous. One more of those hits, and that is going to be game. Oh, and the down beyond the shield. JX104 recognizing that they have been hit by that and shield broken multiple times so far, and that they cannot afford to just sit and shield. But they opt to try and counter hit it rather than just getting out of the way. And that does end up costing them because the up smash not going to come out in time. So Gecko advances to grand finals, winner side. While JX104 are going to have an extra match to play to get back there. So at the moment. We are going to have a loser's quarterfinals match between Cold Ramen and Stardust. And it looks like they're getting right into it. You'll love to see it. Really quickly, let's pop back over to the uh, bracket here for an update. So this is where we're at. Everyone behind this point has been eliminated at this point. So there are five players left in the tournament. There's G Gecko, who we saw earlier. There's Starshiko, Army 7, Cold Ramen, and Stardust. Starshiko and Army 
are currently playing off stream. Cold Ramen and Stardust are going to be up next. We did see Stardust play earlier versus Starshiko. They went down 2-0 in that matchup. And then Cold Ramen we watched against both Jonas and Gecko. Or no, not against Gecko. I think we watched uh, Gecko first. Did we watch first uh, against J104? No, yeah, we, we watched this match. We watched this match. I'm forgetting. Um, but so we've seen Cold Ramen a couple of times. We've seen Starshiko. We've seen Stardust. Only match that we have, only uh, player that we haven't seen yet is Army 7. We have some fans in the chat of Army 7, so I'm sure they are hoping that Army advances and that we get to see some of their matches in uh, loser semis and forward as far as they are able to make it. But here we go. Oops. Cold Ramen versus Stardust. Loser's quarterfinals. Loser gets fifth, as we've said. Also, if you're interested in uh, checking out that bracket, just exclamation mark bracket in the chat, and Nightbot Night will oblige you. And hello, Kitty Cat X Banjo 18. We want Army 7. Well, in order for you to have Army 7 on stream, Army is going to have to defeat Starshi Co., which, in fact, breaking news, breaking news. They did. They have defeated Starshi Co. 2 to 1, so we will be seeing Army 7 play the winner of the match that we have on stream right now. All right, and those are the characters that we were anticipating based on who they had played before. Luke is going to have to make significant use of their projectile game to be able to close space here. Bowser are going to have significantly longer physical range and also hit pretty hard. So Lucas wants to either be very far away to be able to shoot from far away with those PK fires, or they're going to want to get in close. Uh, they want to zone the opponent so that the opponent has to overcommit and then punish by being able to close distance and use their up-close combos. Lucas does have a lot of damage potential if they are able to get a combo started on Bowser, Bowser being both a very large target and a heavy character. But they've got to get in first, and that's the tough part. Ooh, -hoo. forward smash on shield reduces the shield to barely anything, but it is going to work. Very, very uh, high recovery frames on the up smash from Lucas, so that's going to get punished. Now we're back to neutral. Hits a side B. Able to get a beautiful drag down into up smash, and I am so disappointed that that didn't KO because that was gorgeously played. The uh, throw should do it here, yep. So, so far, well played by Stardust. Oh no, does that. Oh, Cold Ramen dropping down pretty low there, but may just well be that they knew their recovery distance and were able to make it. Forward tilt comes out. No KOs yet for Cold Ramen. They are swinging with everything they've got because this Lucas is just teetering on the brink. But they have not actually hit the blast zone yet. They drop very low to try and recover as safely as they possibly can. Oh, but that up air going to get punished by the stall and fall from Cold Ramen. Grab comes through for Cold Rama. That's going to give them some space on stage, but they immediately lose it to a PK fire. Another grab. These isolated stray hits do a pretty decent chunk of damage, so 
while they're not getting strung together, you know, the burst damage does eventually add up to something. Pretty much dead even so far. Slight advantage, I would say, to Bowser, simply for the survivability advantage, but not anymore. Smash attack from Stardust is going to put them in the lead going into Cold Ramen's last stock of game one. Using the up B to try and edge guard here. Smart recovery onto the platform where it's difficult for Lucas to angle that up B2. Great dodge from Stardust, but doesn't catch them with the grab, so the stall on fall hits. Ooh. Just barely whiffs that. I think if uh, Cold Ramen is on land, they hit that forward tilt every day. Nice little sequence here from the Lucas, but goes in too aggressively to try and continue it. PK fires Bowser in the face. You'd think Bowser would be used to fire in his face at this point in time, but... Turns out he doesn't like it. There's a grab. Where's Lucas going? Going up. 164% for Stardust is a huge win for them. That means that they have made this Lucas last far longer than you expect them to against a Bowser. And that has enabled them to get a lot of extra credit damage. 97% on the Bowser. So there is, that is a lead for Stardust. Get an up air, but not much more. They just, they just need to not trade. Because trading is ultimately going to go in Bowser's favor for a little while. Maybe for the next 50% or something until it starts having KO threat. Ooh, this is starting to get really dangerous for Stardust. Lots of pressure being put on by Cold Ramen. They have stage position. We do not want to get edge guarded here. Back throw from the ledge is probably going to do it. Not actually quite, and they actually up smash which does not defend the ledge. Oh, the PK freeze, though. There's no way to mash out of that in time, and Cold Ramen is out of there. So Stardust managing to clutch it out and take game one. Was looking a little bit hairy there at the very end. Cold Ramen started coming back, but did not come back quite fast enough. Reminder that we are now back to best of three, so this could theoretically be the deciding game for Stardust. Cold Ramen needs to win the next two straight to stay in the tournament. All right, here we go. And we have a character switch to a me sword fighter. First, we've seen this character out of Cold Ramen. Wonder if maybe this is a main and Bowser was a fun secondary or... Doesn't seem quite as likely because you would think that we would have seen Cold Ramen pull it out on the winner's set if that were the case. So it's possible that maybe they just think this is a better matchup for them. And there's a grab, throw off the stage, into PK Freeze that is countered. Ooh, and there's that reflect on the, the forward smash. Lucas has done their homework.
Great stage control so far from Stardust. Impressed with how they're playing this so far. This is a dangerous position, though. Cold Ramen in a good edge guard state. Gets clipped by the PK fire, and they cannot just kind of dive in like that. Lucas is going to punish that. They can just dive in like that, apparently, though. PK freeze at the ledge, dodged with invincibility. Cold Ramen recovering just all the way back to center stage and getting a much better position as uh, Stardust fails to account for that. Oh, and there's a grab off of the failed up B attempt on the edge guard. Cold Ramen tries to go all the way out there to get the KO and uh, doesn't quite end up finding it. Up air off the top for Stardust is going to take the first stock of the match here. It's looking good for them so far. All they need is this one match, and they will advance to play against Army 7 in Loser's Semifinals. But you can't be thinking about that just yet, because this game is not over yet. Cold Ramen going in, trying to finish this stock right now. They've got stage position. They've hit an aerial. They're trying to follow with the juggle here, just not quite getting anything out of Stardust yet. Stardust can get something like a knockdown. This could still be dangerous for Cold Ramen. And the back air off the platform there going to finally do it for Cold Ramen. Stardust drops back in, tries to take stage control, gets a grab, back throw off the stage. Again, going for the up B, but uh, Cold Ramen has been outplaying that so far. Has not managed to make that work. Good patience here from Cold Ramen, not overcommitting to go off stage, just taking what damage they can and maintaining the advantage state by keeping center. Good air steer there from Stardust, using Lucas's relatively fast airspeed to make it across those hitboxes into center. Cold Ramen with a great stall there using that dash move. Ooh, but the forward smash, wow, just barely going to survive. Not going to survive the PK freeze, though. Got to watch out for that. You've always got to be watching the Lucas as you're trying to recover so that you do not fall prey to that very common edge guard technique. Forward throw off the stage. Not going to be able to find that forward air. Just a little bit delayed, possibly due to latency. We have seen things like that mess people up before. Ramen in pretty good shape, landing their techs. Not falling prey to jab reset combos and the like. Very patient, safe recovery there from Stardust. Face fading all the way back to be able to sweet spot ledge there. Ooh, back throw off the stage here is dangerous for Cold Ramen. Again, they need to get Stardust onto last stock before any more damage is done here. And that will do it. We are on last stock. Cold Ramen fighting for their tournament life. Stardust fighting to be able to get into loser's semis this game. Instead of needing another game to do it. Cold Ramen gets dash attacked. Stardust tries to go for it all with that up smash, but far too slow. Letting Cold Ramen back on stage. See what Cold Ramen can do with the opportunity that's been given to them. They do read the wave bounce there by uh, Lucas. And they've got a good edge guard position going here. Love the patience again. Still in control. Using that tornado to maintain it. Oh, and that forward smash will actually do it. Cold Ramen with a beautifully played last stock. Just in control the entire time. Made every right call. And we've got ourselves a set on our hands, folks. One to one.
So it looks like the added mobility that Cold Ramen is getting from the Mii Sword Fighter, and perhaps the uh, disjointed hitbox and the projectiles, and the extra recovery options, that they are helping out a lot in dealing with this Lucas. Both still in the ring. They have now left, presumably, to make their decisions here. They'll be hopping back in the ring shortly. All right, same characters running it right back, but let's see what the counter pick is. Because of winning round one, Stardust is going to have counter pick advantage, and so this deciding game is on the stage that they wanted to play on, and that stage was Yoshi's Story. It's a large platform stage. Lots of space in between those platforms. Pretty big blast zones. Gives Lucas a lot of room to work with. They want to play a lot from the air. And this will enable them to do so without ending up accidentally landing on a platform or something. PK Fire is able to keep Cold Ramen off him for long enough to get into position for the edge guard, but Stardust not able to actually keep control. So it goes even. Cold Ramen with a swing and a miss. Smart play there on the PK uh, PK Thunder from Lucas. Making it twirl around a little bit so that you have to dodge it twice. Great forward tilt from Cold Ramen. Oh, and just barely whiffing on that down smash. That would have hit on land, I'm sure. And they go out for a PK Freeze edge guard. Very clever positioning of it to make sure that the PK Freeze stays in place. But no dice there. Does not make it connect. Ooh, and yeah, Stardust uh, putting themselves in a vulnerable position, having to recover high. And Cold Ramen in a great position to punish that and start up an edge guard sequence. And they are able to position beautifully underneath it, not trying to challenge that hitbox at all, being as lethal as it is. And they get a charged up smash off. So Cold Ramen going into game one with the early lead or sorry deciding game game three the last game with the early lead dash attack to hit him off stage every time that they have been uh landing that attack they've been following up the tornado and lucas has been following up by the uh pk fire and getting hit does look like the tornado wins that exchange with the PK Fire. Might be something that Stardust needs to adapt to at some point here. So far, Stardust in a lot of trouble. Almost a full stock down now. Try to go for the PK Freeze. Try to go for the PK Thunder. A lot of these edge guards have been tried before and are not working too well against Cold Ramen. And that dash move will actually put Cold Ramen at a three stock to one advantage. Now they are just one hit away from being down to two stocks, but they're already getting some extra credit. And I love the aggression from Cold Ramen, the confidence that they have a stock to burn right now, so they might as well go pretty aggressive with it. They've already gotten a lot out of it. 58% is huge right now. It's about halfway to KO percent. There's still a full stock to go before they're even on the same playing field. All right, well, if you're going to do it, being at 69% is when you are going to pull it off. Stardust trying to figure out a way in, reflecting the tornado. Well played so far. Good center stage control. Mess up a little bit on that follow-up. Ooh, and that dash is going to get the 69 cancel. Oh, beautiful use of the tornadoes there for Cold Ramen. Ooh, 
And that's going to be a shield grab thrown off stage. Can they get the early edge guard? Nope, nothing going to happen from that. And Cold Robin, in fact, going to reverse and get Lucas off stage. Stardust recovers high, dodges the KO options that Cold Robin is going for, and just gets some good old damage with PK Fire. The drag downs with Nair have not been working for Stardust so far. They have not been able to actually follow that up into an attack that's going to hit. Trying to just stay off stage and spam these projectiles. They do manage to connect with hit two of PK Thunder. Forward smash only connects on shield. Start is still in it, but just super high percent. Cold Ramen does not need much, and they are playing very patiently because they know it. That's going to be a grab off the stage, and that does KO off the side. So they take it all the way back to last stock, but 175%. It is going to take a miracle for Stardust right now. They're going to need to really not get hit by that if they want to stay in. Cold Ramen on the recovery is able to take out Stardust and win that set, moving on to losers' semifinals against Army 7. So a great counter pick ultimately. We saw nothing but the Bowser up until that point. But the Mii Sword Fighter ended up needing being what they needed to stay in the tournament there. So while we get Army 7 up, we're going to take a very short break. Probably won't even uh, take as long as it takes the players to get in here. But we will be back with you shortly with Losers Semifinals. And we are back. Army 7 has entered the arena. Waiting for Cold Ramen 7 to make it back in. Got a whole bunch of Army 7 supporters in the chat. This is our first time that we are seeing them on stream tonight. afternoon i guess i should say it's only like 3 p.m usually these run later <laughs> so quick update on what our bracket currently looks like while we're waiting for our players to get all settled here we go 
So here's Loser's semifinals between Army 7 and Cold Ramen. Winner will play against JX104, that DDD player. And then G Gecko, the Yoshi, is waiting in Grands. For those who do not know, just so you have a heads up, this is a double elimination tournament, which means that you need to lose twice in order to be eliminated. G Gecko has only lost has not lost at all yet, and if they were to lose this round, they will still have only lost once. So that's what this second round is here for, just in case it is needed. We are getting right into it. Cold Ramen opting to stay with the Me Sword Fighter and Army Seven on the King K rule. So we'll get that all set up here, and then we'll be ready to start watching. So Cold Ramen with the first hits here. Dash attack for Army 7 will secure them the crown back. And a grab. Grab doesn't end up going anywhere, but the crown will hit. Ooh, Army 7 whiffing the grab. Cold Ramen trying to go in. Oh, wait, this is the me sword fighter. This is a me brawler. Threw me off there. Like, wait a minute, that's not a sword move. Where's the sword? So we've got a, a me connoisseur here in Cold Ramen. I wonder what that uh, me is that they're, they're cosplaying as here. Kind of looks like a Ghost in the Shell character, but I'm assuming that's not the case. All right, and Cold Ramen going to be taking first stock here. It is still relatively close. Their Army 7 is able to get one of those follow-ups off a of grab, and they've got it. Unfortunately, it is a bit of a mix-up, and they have not been guessing right so far. We'll clean it up with a dash attack, and King K. Rule is not hurting with just 20%. This is a character that lives forever. They have armor on their belly... Generally just a very heavy character and a very good recovery. So that is something that you have to factor in when considering who's actually in the lead. They are able to follow up and get a number of grabs in a row, but no single hits able to manage able to uh, come through after that grab goes out. They've been swinging from the ground and uh, Cold Ramen has just been mashing out and getting up above. Almost want to see Army 7 going for an aerial follow-up instead of trying to stay grounded like they have been. And they shield, and the standoff is won by Cold Ramen, who decides to just take themselves out and even the stock count up. Interesting call there. They were already pretty even, so it doesn't really change the game state that much. Just makes it a little more climactic, I think. And the dash attack will connect. Maybe the thought was that they were going to land on stage and Army 7 was going to get dunked. And they misspaced it a little bit. But so far, it's been Army 7 on this stock. They go for an up smash through the platform. That's going to get punished. Cold Ramen hovering near the ledge and Army 7 wisely recovering very carefully to avoid the dunk. Army 7 threatening with these grabs, not actually finding one yet. They still have yet to successfully follow up on one of those grabs with an attack. Oh, Cold Ramen just throwing out so many hitboxes, and Army is running into a lot of them. Whoo, and the good patient shield gets a grab. Can they follow up? They go for the up air this time and does not quite connect, but the forward smash will. And Army 7 is able to hold on and take game one of winners, or sorry, this is losers semifinals. Very close set so far. 
but uh, Army able to pull it off for now. And the crowd goes wild for Army 7. Chat loves them. Looks like they have locked in the stage. Would be curious to see if uh, we have the... Okay, we do have a Mii Sword Fighter this time around. So Cold Ramen going back to the character that won them the set that they played previously versus Stardust. Starts off with a grab that is immediately armored through by, or follow up is immediately armored through by army. So neither character ever able to get a clean competitive advantage, although army with good center stage control right here goes for a huge down air there. Would have been a very big turnaround for the game and they don't get punished super hard for it. In fact, they're able to get the stock anyway with a forward smash, same kind of turnaround forward smash that won them the last match. Pretty good damage already on this new stock and great use of the armor with that forward tilt. Up smash gonna be a great... Wow, army is just locking Cold Ramen out of the stage. Standing in center stage Cold Ramen has not been able to contest. They finally hit with the recovery option. They're finally able to close some distance, but this is supposed to be Cold Ramen's counter pick here, and it has not been going their way so far. It's making it relatively difficult for Cold Ramen to recover, I think, to get out of this edge guard position. Ooh, and a recovery error from them will put it at a three stock to one deficit. This, remember, is only semis. It is not best of five yet. Cold Ramen, if they want to stay in the tournament, is going to need to take three stocks before losing one. And Army is just playing impeccably so far. The down air will come through for Cold Ramen. Army going to recover just fine. And it's also more difficult for, I think, Cold Ramen to get the edge guard situation... Uh, under control with that platform being there. I don't know. This seems like the stage counter pick has backfired on uh, Ramen here. It seems like it has been playing into Army's hands more than it has the Mii Sword Fighter. There's that throw backwards off the stage from Army. They are looking for their finishing move here. This back air is just a little bit too predictable. Cold Ramen not going to fall for those yet. There's the down throw. Do they get the follow-up? They do right when they need it to end the set. Army 7 with a three-stock victory to advance from Losers Semifinals into Losers Finals. The crowd loves an underdog and coming through from the loser's bracket army. So far, yet to be stopped on stream. JX104, the next opponent, it is going to be a heavyweight bout between King DDD and King K Rule. Unless uh, JX104 surprises us with a character choice. Or army. 
We're now in our top three. Loser of this match gets third place. Winner gets a shot at G Gecko in winner's finals. Army 7 never did get an opportunity to play against G Gecko. They were actually dropped into losers by Cold Ramen on winner's side. And so that match that they just played went differently than it did in winner's bracket. Army 7 with the comeback there. Now, it was a close set on winner's side. Army did take a game. But uh, cool to see them being able to adapt and defeat someone who beat them earlier. So, Army 7 has not had a chance in the tournament to play either Cold Ramen or Gecko. Gecko was on Army's side of the bracket, but they never got far enough to play them. And then JX104 was on the opposite side in winners. So both of these are going to be new matchups, assuming Army were to advance. JX104 did play against Gecko earlier in winners finals. So if they were to advance, that would be a rematch. Ultra Swords asking, how's everyone in chat? How y'all doing, guys? Got a bunch of army fans who have been eating good so far. Ah, Ultra, Ultra Sword is Stardust. Welcome, Stardust. Army is my father. So nice to see a son supporting his dad. Making their selections, it looks like, so... Should be hopping in the ring momentarily. And away we go. Same characters that we had predicted they were going to be playing. Army sticking to the K rule. JX104 sticking to the DDD. Cold Ramen. Hops in the chat, immediately repping Army. The player that knocked them out of the tournament. Just everyone is an Army fan. So far, Army playing evasively, taking the first bits of damage against JX104. JX104 with a hit, able to control center stage a little bit for it, but not for long. Army gets back in, goes for a forward air, whiffs. Oh, but the turnaround blunderbuss actually connects. Great dash attack from Army, using that belly armor. Ooh, that was a little bit spooky. Almost poked through shield there. Or broke shield, I should say. Did poke. Jax104 with a dash attack, goes all the way out there for a forward air, but is still not going to be able to stop the K rule recovery. Great. Air dodge from Army there. Whoo! Army just absolutely walking through a minefield of edge guard attempts from JX104. Pretty even on the percentage at this point. Tries to come down with a back air, gets shield grabbed. Going to get down thrown, but that's not going to follow up into anything. Army goes for a smash attack, also going to get shield grabbed. And the forward air off stage is going to do it for JX104. They take first stock. JX. <laughs> Army going for a crazy read on the forward smash, but JX104 not having it just immediately takes them off stage and does 52 damage to them. The throw not quite going to do it. DDD is a heavy character. 
JX104 able to get on stage. Army needs this stock pretty soon. They are starting to fall behind. Neutral air not going to do this, do it for the stock, but is going to put them in a position of control. JX104 a little bit slow on the punish there. Not going to be able to get too much, but 80%, 94% now on army. They dodged that smash attack with JX104 too quick. Army really needs a follow-up here. That throw will probably do it. Oh, they actually go for the the uh, down throw instead of just eating them off the stage. I think back throwing there probably KOs. Not realizing that the blunderbuss is going to get eaten by that move and spit back out at them. Army is now down three stocks to one. After going relatively even in percent, just not being able to finish this stock off. They need their finisher right now. The time is done for tacking on damage. They need something to connect and connect hard. Even that will not do it. Ooh, jumping into a Gordo too. And the counter going to cause DDD to absolutely explode. But it's 76% on last stock to two clean ones. JX104 solidly in control. Just needs to find a few more hits, and that will do it. Army needs to find everything right now. If they are able to get a quick dunk off of this edge guard or something, that can turn things around, but they really need something aggressive and fast. There's the throw off stage, collects the crown again. Doesn't shield the Gordo, so loses some time on that, and JX104 able to get back on the, on the ground. That's not quite going to KO yet, but JX104 really wants this forward air, and that absolutely will do it. JX104. Honestly, I think that looks a lot less close than it actually was. Because, again, that was a problem of Army being able to find the KO option. They really never did on that first stock for an entirely too long a time. If they just land a strong back air or something... Earlier than that, they did about pretty comparable damage to each other over the course of the match. It's just because JX104 lasted so much longer on that first stock, a lot of that damage kind of went to waste. So, if we see Army swinging with the right options here, we definitely could see a much closer game too without too much actually changing. The chat absolutely believes in the army comeback. And you know what? I do too. I definitely think it's possible. Same character. Sticking to their guns. Their guns and their hammers, I guess. And we're going to Battlefield. So army wants platforms. And so far, Army establishing themselves pretty solidly in the center stage. Finally gets counter hit by JX104 and reversed. Army playing very patiently, trying to maneuver their way into center stage, but well played so far by JX104 to maintain it. And the roll will get covered by the down smash there. It does cover both of those options. Dash attack and a whiff, but not going to get punished either. And army at least has the low ground. Ooh. They get thrown off and Gordoed off. And another, wow, just no dodge or anything on the JX104 forward air. Might have been expecting a Gordo, and so maybe the timing was off by a little bit. And there's a down air that will absolutely trade favorably for army. That's kind of what I was looking for them to go for a, a little bit more in the last match. And so they've drawn even in stocks. They've still got a mountain to climb here. JX104 has been so good at holding center stage throughout this match so far. 
Oh no, that just trades for the stock? That was an insane amount of knockback for that percentage. JX104 trying to end it right now. And the tech is missed and army is down immediately. This is a best of five, so army is not out yet, but JX104 taking control of that small stage and absolutely denying army the ability to stand on it in the last two stocks. Gonna have to be a reverse 3-0 for army to be, to be able to make it into grand finals now And we've got a character switch from Army going on to Bowser now. Three, two, one, Army going in. Fantastic aerial spacing so far on the shield. Great pressure. Up the out of shield will claim control of the stage. They try to swat at the uh, Gordo, but misspace it a little bit and end up getting clipped. JX104 tries to regain control, but Army takes it right back with a solid neutral air. And the forward smash actually has the read on what JX104 is going to do, but end up mistiming it slightly. Down B is going to not quite KO, but get Army back to the stage safely and do a lot of damage, and the forward air will finish it off. Army off to an early lead. Dash attack on shield. Definitely going to get punished. Army off stage. And actually gets hit by that dash attack. Very long lasting hitbox. Up be out of shield. Ooh, gets uh, command grabbed. Army has just been playing really well around getting hit. They have been getting hit and then just getting their own follow-ups off of their own hit. Lots of, like, neutral airs that come out before JX104 is able to put out the option they want to connect with. Oh, and the dunk from JX104 takes the lead right back. There's a momentum shift that they definitely needed. Army continues to swing, which is good. You like to see that kind of confidence, but you've also got to be a little bit careful on defense. Back air almost KOing there, and that one definitely will. Last stock, pretty negligible percent. Oh, but the fire breath in the wrong direction. The Gordo ends up whiffing, so Army, a little bit lucky there, but 73% and almost getting dunked. Oh, no, the air dodge. The air dodge, expecting, I think, maybe to have to tech off the ledge or something on the edge guard. But uh, they end up dropping too low off of it. And JX104 with a clean sweep in losers' finals. 3-0 and will advance to grand finals set one here against G-Gecko for the rematch. So JX104 can stay right here. Thank you, Army. A salute from the chat to ya. Everybody's proud. But now it is Gecko's turn. Army truly did bring an army with him. <laughs> Maybe a, a seven nation army. Is army seven, huh? Do, 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 huh? Huh? Is that their theme song? We gonna make that happen? 
I don't know. Only you can make that happen because you're the one who has control of your uh, computer speakers. But anyway, Gecko is back in our lobby, ready to get started with Grand Finals Set 1. Quick reminder, this is a double elimination bracket, and Gecko has not lost once yet. So while JX104 uh, only needs to lose once to be eliminated, Gecko needs to lose twice. And that is going to happen at the hands of JX104. So JX104 needs to win two sets here. Gecko only needs to win one in order to win the tournament. Gecko has two chances to win that set. All right, here we go. JX104, you can see the, the L by their tag denotes that they are on the loser's side. Starting off on Pokemon Stadium. Egg-type Pokemon versus a Hammer-type Pokemon. There's a down throw and a Nair. Good start for JX104. Match that they played uh, versus Gecko earlier was fairly competitive. Even though it did end up being a 3-0 for Gecko. It was definitely some close games. Slight adjustments, and JX104 could definitely start bringing it. Uh, and there we go. Forward air off the side is going to be a great start for JX104. They spit the egg back out, reject it. Try to come back down with a back air, and I can see the idea. Unfortunately, it is going to lead to them taking about 50 more damage. But they've got some extra credit on the board now. Ooh, spent just a little bit too long going for the suction. Yoshi uh, is impervious to vacuums, it would seem. Oh, and this is big damage from... Uh... Oh my god, is that it? And they do get forward smashed off. Gecko with just an explosive combo, like we were seeing earlier against JX104. Sometimes they just press enough buttons and get enough combos that... Uh... All of a sudden, the lead evaporates for their opponents. Look at that. JX104 took first stock in this game. Would you believe that if you saw the scoreline right now? Just such huge burst potential on Yoshi against this character. And a Dragon Ball Z moment separates them momentarily. And the trade goes out, and Yoshi solidly wins it. Gecko looking very strong after a first stock that looked pretty competitive. It seems as though the punish game for this Yoshi is strong enough on the DDD that it is very difficult for DDD to maintain a lead for long. Um, I mean, seeing the profile picture both in game and on Discord, I wouldn't expect JX104 to be playing anything other than the DDD that they're on right now. But uh, if we were to see a character switch, now would probably be the time for it. They are going to stick to the penguin. Let's see what stage counter pick they can pull off here. If I remember correctly, uh, previously they were going for final destination. And uh, I, it felt to me like that was backfiring a little bit. Gecko getting in there with some aerial combos. JX104 able to get stage control back with the Gordo. And this is looking good so far for them. They go for a dash attack and whiff, though. Able to get control back with another forward air. These Gordos are doing so much work right now. Gecko has not been doing anything to try and uh, reflect them back, nor to dodge them. Ooh, 
That down air, very aggressive from J JX104. Lucky to have the armor on the up B to be able to get back to stage. Up air actually might have KO'd there. They're trading back and forth. Lots of damage on both players. Not going to take long for either of them to be able to get the stock. Almost gets shield broken there as J JX104. Gecko uh, just barely doesn't get what they're looking for on it. But both players trade stocks quickly. JX104 with the invincibility advantage on the way down, though. And they do use that for a nice 43%. Up tilt into up air. Great follow-up from JX104. Dash attack. So far looking good. Does get the Gordor reflected, finally. And another reflect on it. But that little bit of chip damage is not making a huge dent in the lead that JX104 has just yet. Up tilt gets him up over the top. Oh no, the down B actually doesn't land on the ledge. And Gecko with a recovery error there. Going to put them a little bit behind, but they are going in right now. They are going so hard. JX104 finally able to stop that momentum with a grab, but... Gecko, it seems like, just suddenly switched gears and went extremely aggressive. And the up smash out of the egg is going to get the stock there. JX104 going in, trying to suffocate Yoshi with aggression, but the Yoshi says something back. 52% worth. Oh, and oh my god, this is too much. This is a lot of combo potential. JX104 needed that reversal there to get out of that position. They're getting jab locked. They're getting up air comboed, juggled. So many things happening to them. They really need this finishing move before Yoshi is able to get too much more done. 127 to 125. The back air doesn't come out. I think it would have hit and probably KO'd. Very powerful option for DDD. JX104 needs to play so safe. So they are playing the slower character. Back air from Gecko will take game two. Very, very close one, but Gecko still able to come out on top. Again, JX104 coming so close, but then all of a sudden just explosive damage from Gecko. Gecko decides to go on the aggressive and strings together something beautiful. And takes it all right back. JX104 can space safely around the Yoshi and play the game of attrition. They seem to be able to win. But Gecko, just whenever they have needed it, have found a massive combo that has put JX104 on the back foot. And not given them the breathing room they need to find their final finisher. So we are now going to see tournament point for the next three games until either Gecko wins the tournament off of one of them or JX104 resets the bracket. Again, another great start for JX104. Solidly in control. Really doing a fantastic job, as they have been all tournament, of keeping center stage and locking Gecko out of it. Not letting Gecko use that maneuverability by putting Gordos in their way, by putting large hitboxes in their way. 21% is all Gecko was able to manage on that stock. And a great up tilt there for JX104 to put Gecko back in exactly the same spot again. This is looking so strong so far. Full stock up. Gecko is able to get a jab reset, but JX104 patient comes down with the forward air and is able to get control right back. Needs to be careful about the Gordos being reflected. Ooh, and no tech from Gecko, so they're going to eat another Gordo and be right back off the stage. This is not going to KO yet, but it is going to come awfully close, and the next one will.
Back air does it. JX104 about to three stock here on an opponent they haven't beaten yet. Ooh, no, no three stock. Gecko able to get him out there and get the forwarder that they need to finish it off. Jinx 104 has not found a good hit yet. There's the grab. They needed that reversal. Needed to get rid of that momentum. Another great grab. They're reading how aggressively this Yoshi wants to play and putting out some good counter hits, but when the Yoshi gets on top, there are only so many things DDD can do. DDD does not have a lot of very fast moves to be able to combo break. And there's a grab. We're probably going to see throw off stage. Goes for the Gordo. Does not connect at all. Gecko back on. There's another throw. Again, going to be off stage. Going to maybe threaten a forward air here. Nope, just opting. Oh, there's a great forward air. Baited the opponent into thinking he was going to hold it just a little bit too long. Goes for an up smash. Going to get punished in a big way for that. But no up air for Yoshi, so... They are still alive here. Up air does KO at this point, but back air from JX104 is going to KO. So they at least get one on their counter pick. But now there is going to be counter pick advantage for Gecko every single match for the rest of the, the first set here. JX104 is going to need to break Gecko on each of those counter picks in order to stay in and even reset the bracket. Meanwhile, Gecko just needs to win on one of the next two counter picks in order to take the entire tournament. So now we get to see the counter pick of Gecko. Based on how it went earlier, legitimately would not be surprised to see Final Destination, even though that was what JX104 was counterpicking themselves in the first set in Winner's Finals. All right, same characters, sticking to our guns. But where are we going? Final Destination, just like I said, this was, again, a counterpick of JX104's and winners, but uh, it was so dominant from Gecko that I am not surprised to see them trying to go for it again. The airspace is just excellent for Yoshi. They don't need platforms to maneuver through the air. JX104 kind of does. Ooh. Doesn't get the cross up, and so a shield grab is going to happen there for JX104. Tries to go out there for the edge guard, and you can see where it was coming from. The timing wasn't quite there. Again, latency online play going to make that very difficult to do. Back air, well spaced, using both jumps from JX104 to get it into position. And the Gordo, not quite going to take them out off the top side. But they're fiending for something like a back air right now. You can see JX104 turning around as they approach to see if they can get that quick KO option out there. And the game freezes just a little bit on the up smash out of shield that Gecko is able to win from it. Again, JX104 fiending for back airs, but I think Gecko can see that it's happening. And they do get a massive combo off for 58% to start this uh, second stock. Forward tilt is shielded. Really great defensive play so far from Gecko. Not letting JX104 get away with as much as they were in the last match. Up air will catch Yoshi out with that long hitbox, but 118% on JX104. Probably not the position they want to be in yet, but they are tacking on a lot of percent. They've got control right now. 53 out of nowhere. 79%. JX104 is on a tear right now on this stock. 
This is the kind of uh, burst potential that we have not really seen from JX104 so far. They have had to win all of their uh, engagements with attrition. And they get a crazy up air off the right side to take that stock and just completely reverse the lead here. Now Gecko is the one on the back foot. They do have a pretty easy next stock to take, which they do, but back to dead even and jx104 with the invincibility advantage on the startup but gecko playing beautifully out of that to be able to set up their own damage and that gordo does not bounce the way that it needs to in order to hit the yoshi jx a little bit behind right now needs to use the stage control they have patiently and not get caught by those random forward airs being thrown out by gecko this is going to be a throw off the stage, threatening the down B. But uh, that is a little bit over aggressive. I think uh, Gecko is going to be looking for that just a little bit too much. Oh, very, very scary shield there on the down B. They do manage to make it connect, uh, but uh, that was really, really close to just being a shield break. I love the way that JX uses the up air onto the stage and cancels their landing lag. That's really well played, and that opened them up to being able to just squeak out Game 4 and bring this first set to a Game 5. Gecko now has one more counterpick opportunity to take the tournament on this set. Otherwise, we're going to have a whole other best of five. And I, I don't think there's any question about what characters they're picking. I don't think that's going to change. Only question is what stage are we going? And it looks like we're just running it back. I don't think either of them got out to change the stage at all. So this is just going to be Final Destination as our final destination for set one of Grand Finals. JX104 looking like they definitely have a shot here. What they need to be doing is avoiding those big burst, burst damage combos that Yoshi has been getting. They've been winning the War of Attrition. As long as they can just stay out of the blender, they should do well. It is up to Gecko to try and find a way in here. And they've not been super successful in doing that so far on this stock. That down air almost sets up into an up air. Jax does not get the tech. And the reversal there is huge for Gecko. Keeping JX104 from keeping that oppressive center stage control that has been getting them so much of their damage so far in this set and this tournament. You'll see JX104 just absolutely rule the stage from about one-third stage. Forcing their opponent to the ledge, giving them no opportunity to advance, and having their back to the wall so they can't retreat. But this has been really, really big for Gecko so far. They have been pretty much a full stock ahead so far. 87%. A forward air into up air. One more of those will take the stock for sure. Forward air into up air. What did I tell you? And we have a taunt coming out of Gecko. Gecko's feeling really confident right now. JX104 needs to get back on the rhythm if they want to stay in this. They get a grab into forward air. Good damage. Not able to make the Gordo connect. Good coverage from Gecko to prevent that from happening. And a back air. A couple of back airs out of shield. Three out of shield. All the way off stage and they just nair them. They're trying to get max damage out of every opening here. And it is a full stock up now for Yoshi. The jab combo going to connect for JX104. But they just run in and get hit by an aerial here. Not quite setting up at the right aerial spacing. Not anticipating Yoshi to be aggressive. 
The up air probably will KO at this point, based on how far that one went. Forward air just a little bit too predictable there. And Gecko going to have the knockdown. Doesn't quite get close enough to get the jab reset, though. Dash attack whiffs from JX104, but the back air does not. It is last stock game five of set one of grand finals here. JX104 needs this to stay in the tournament. Gecko really, really wants this, so they do not have to play another set, and they do take it. Forward air off the side, ending it in style with a dunk. And Gecko is your Rowan University Smash Virtual Esports Open champion. Congratulations to Gecko on the huge set win over JX104. It was very competitive, and hats off to JX104, dominant in all of their other matches in the tournament, and giving us a show in Grand Finals for sure. And of course, we have to tip our caps to Army as well as the crowd favorite. But it is going to be Gecko in the end, taking home all the glory of first place. So... That is going to be the tournament. I'd like to thank Rowan University for having us out. Make sure to check out the shop and to make sure to donate to that charitable cause that we, they uh, talked about earlier on in the event. Really appreciate the work that they do. And thank you to all of you for tuning in and watching. We are Joystick Productions. We are a production company that does esports events both uh, in person and virtually over the internet. If you want, you can check us out on our Twitter or our Instagram. The socials have been getting posted in the Twitch chat as the tournament has gone on. I am Jem, and uh, this is me signing off. Y'all have a lovely afternoon and evening. Thanks for having us. Good night.